you'll start us off. Hey everybody, uh, welcome to Tommy and Wayne straight from the hip. Uh, we decided after many years of being uh, fans and uh, of the Sabres and the Bills and actually all sports and the fact that um, we like to commentate a little bit on life itself. Uh, sometimes uh, the politics get involved, but we're going to keep this a very clean show. But we're going to we're going to talk about what we what we want to on the show. Unlike a radio show where you're kind of censored. Uh, today is March 27th. It's our first installment. This one may be a little bit longer than uh, the ones we'll do in the future. However, uh, we got a lot to talk about in this first one. Um, and in the future, we may ask uh, our viewers for any subjects that they'd like, like us to touch upon. Uh, so with that, uh, this is my buddy Tommy Mullen. How you doing? And uh, again, I'm Wayne Morlock. Uh, we uh, are excited about this. It took a while. Thank you to my buddy uh, Al Walters for the camera equipment. Uh, it's top notch. So shout out to Al. Tommy, I think you wanted to give a shout out? Yeah, Pete DeGiacomo, our lifelong friend, he's home, going to be watching this. And Pete, we love you. I'd also like to start off, you know, like we said, we might touch on some political things, but I see yesterday <clears throat> the Department of Education canceled all funding to the Special Olympics. That's a really sad day. Uh, we got billions to fight these endless wars and uh, DACA DACA and the immigrants and sanctuary cities. And we forget about a very important part of our our culture and that's that's pretty sad. I'd also like to congratulate the UB men's and women's basketball teams. Yeah, well, Great job. The Buttes, way to go ladies. And uh, those bandits are kicking some butt out there too. So a lot of good things happening in the area but obviously our major league teams is going to be the number one subject. Yeah Tommy that's that's unfortunate. I think that uh, we in this area have been so uh, used to losing that we get a little uh, down when UB the men and women lost but you know what that that's a hell of a program they built there, and uh, if not for a one game and you're out, you, you don't know how far either one of those. Teams and luck of the win. draw too. You luck know, of the draw. Different team. Also, the the football program there has been pretty good too. And you know, we'll also talk about the other colleges when things happen there too. And sure. sure. Uh, one thing that came about this morning, and this is going to be straight from the hip. So, uh, <laughs> the, blaming the Pagulas for the problem with the Sabers to me is absurd. Yeah, uh, I think everybody, the, the, the big thing everybody wants to hear now or what their rallying cry is, is, well, you know, thank you, Pagulas, for saving the teams, but, you know, we, we haven't won in eight years in the case of the Sabres. Um, listen, I think the only thing that we can say about the Pagulas, Tom, is that maybe they held on too long. Uh, maybe they hired the wrong guy, like a right. Dan Bilesma. Um, I think that you're going to make those mistakes. Um, if you look around the NHL uh, or or the National Football League, what you find is that the good the good franchises actually stay good for a long time because they found A, great management and coaching, and then B, like the New England Patriots, stumble into a fifth round draft choice right. who is now going to go down as the best uh, quarterback in, in, in league history. Um, I think what happens for the rest of us, so to speak, is we stumble a little bit. You've got to find that right thing. And, and I personally, and we're going to talk more about the Sabres, but I personally think the uh, the two-headed monster of Bean and McDermott are, are they seem to have everything right now. I say seem to you know the proof will be in the wins and losses, Tommy. But I think that they've got the right idea, and the people that come here want to be here, and they love the town, and they they get in early, and so I think the Pagulas have found themselves a little bit of a formula with the Bills. Um, the Sabers we're going to talk a lot about in a few moments. Uh, that has been what I consider a complete disaster. However, I'm not going to pin that on the Pagulas. We wouldn't be talking here right now about the Buffalo Sabres if it wasn't for the Pagulas. No, and, and you bring up a good point about drafting, and obviously we're talking about Brady in the fifth round. That was the biggest problem with the Bills for like 18 years, neglecting the uh, most important position on the field quarterback and just neglecting that, and our drafting as a whole is pretty poor. I mean, uh, Terrell Troop over Rob Gronkowski. I, I mean, we need go no further there. Yeah. Uh, the Sabres, could, could I go further though? Well, this, we don't, we're trying to keep this to a limited well, time. Well, I'm going to make it quick, okay, Tom? Give you me remember a minute. Where when that pick was made? We yeah. were in a. Yeah, I, I remember. Tommy Terrell Troop. Okay, he was in some Mickey Mouse conference down in the southeast in Florida, and, and the guy was a second team All American in Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse division. Okay, had one tackle against the UB Bulls when we stunk. 
And we took him over a kid that worked out in Williamsville, Rob Gronkowski. It is just absolutely pitiful. Absolutely pitiful. And we had so many years of that. And, and really quickly, because I know we got a lot to talk about, Dick Geron, if I saw that scrawny old bastard today, and pardon my French, it'll be the last time, I might grab his throat, okay? Because he took Aaron Maven when the world knew he was a one-year wonder. We've all had it with that garbage. We need solid drafting, solid decisions, and we've got to move on and get to that. So, can't, couldn't say it better myself, but now focusing on the Sabres for a second, people are saying, well, Housley uh, doesn't have the players. Well, I, I kind of blame the fact that the way he plays the players he has. Mm -hmm. um, Botterill has, you know, he's taken our two assets, Kane and O'Reilly, and basically got nothing back for them. Nothing. And uh, and then Phil with, like, Saboka, I don't understand how... The key to the Sabres' failures, I think, and, and, and with the Bills, too, over the years, putting people in positions they don't belong. Yep. And then, like, good coordinators as head coaches and good scouts as, as GMs. GMs and, and in some cases, players in positions where ah, they really don't belong there, but they start thinking they do. And the answer for the for the Sabres is every Tuesday morning in the statistics is the time on the ice. And some of these play. I mean, guys on this team are playing 14, 15 minutes when they would play six in other cities. Yeah, and the answer could be, well, who do you play? Well, Jason, you, the roster's weak. And I heard a show this morning where they were talking about bag skating the players and, you know, a standard has to be developed where it's unacceptable. That's true to a point, but the biggest problem with that is guaranteed contracts in the NHL. Yeah. You can skate a guy. Once he signs that deal, you're stuck with him for three, four, God forbid, six years. Yep. And uh, I think the Sabres need to move on and, and start trusting some of the, the younger players that we have brought in and go from there. Look, let me, let me expand, expand on that, Tommy. I mean, look back to guaranteed contracts. It was the early 80s. The NFL started making a ton of money. Uh, Major League Baseball has always been crazy. Uh, the NBA. So what happened is they, they appeased the players by saying, well, we're we will guarantee your contracts. Well, that was great when the guys were making 60 grand. Okay, Now they're making 10 million. Now they're making 4 million on the fourth line. So what they've done is they've created a monster, and uh, what they got to do is I would, I would lock them out. If I'm the owners, 2020, I lock them out and say, there will be no more guaranteed contracts. Now, you can go without being paid for two years, or you can do anything you want, but we got to stop it. And it's not just the money, it's ruining the sport, okay? What did our wonderful GM, Bottrell, do? He took so much baggage back on those deals, and I mean baggage. He wants Connor Sherry, he goes and he gets Hunwick, a 33-year-old journeyman. With okay. a clause that you couldn't trade him at well, the trade deadline. Exactly. I, I, Unheard he, of. He, he lets this stuff go. Then let's talk about St. Louis. Berglund and Saboka. Tommy, did we not talk about... In September. Uh, in September. When that deal happened or just after it, these guys were nothing but clowns. They were benched in St. Louis. For lack of effort. For lack of effort. And they come here, and Berglund is horrific, and I guess he's got mental issues. God bless him. I, you know, whatever. But he certainly couldn't play second-line center. Now you got this Saboka. I mean, i got to tell you, if he isn't, if it's not being mandated by Bottrell to play him, then Housley's got a real drug habit. He's got to be high because he might be the worst player. He looks like an ECHL player to me. Tom, I, I don't know what you think. Well, they talk about, uh, and our, our GM definitely lets the landscape set up around him. Yeah, I wish he would be more proactive instead of reactive. And now we're talking about some uh, Skinner and the Stone deal. Well, take a look at that, sure, but take a look at Saboka. Someone paid him three point three million a year. Yeah, I, he's got fifty two, I think, career goals. Fifty two uh, career. Rob, goals. Robbie Ray, who was a mucker and a fourth line guy, had forty one career. I know. And so Boca's been so yet uh, yeah, that's going to raise the pay scale around there. Berglund, Saboka, these are guaranteed deals. We're still riding out the, the Oposo deal. I liked the signing at the time. Yeah. I don't know the ins and outs of everything. We're not the supposed season. to. We're not and supposed to know the ins and outs. We have four more years of Kyle, and he's really struggling. Yeah, and it seems people say the Sabres have a young team. We really, really don't. No. I mean, forget the call-ups the last couple of days. Reinhardt, Jack Eichel, Middleset, Darlene. We are really, really are, I don't know if I'm with well, Tage Thompson, I guess, we're our young guys. And, then, and yet, they're the only ones scratched. 
Yeah. Um, the, the, they wouldn't touch the veterans. And sometimes it's almost, being a long-time travel coach, it's almost like the fathers are calling. Like, um, <laughs> it's it's Mr. Larson on the phone. <laughs> Sorry I had to cut you a little bit, but we're down a goal. I'm going back to November. and I, We're down a goal, and we're rolling all four lines to keep everybody happy. I, I don't understand it. No. Saboka in overtime, I, 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 no. do we fire Phil, do we not? I, I don't know. Um, yeah, we'll talk, we can talk more about that, but I think if you look at the young players, so you're a kid down in Rochester scoring goals, looking pretty good, and you look up here. I, I remember Tom and I talked about this in, in August, and I went down to the first training camp session, and I happened to sit next to uh, Dunleavy. I really didn't even recognize him at first, and he started talking to me, and I said, look, I got a question for you. Everybody talks about the turnover. Everybody talks about how these young kids are coming in. Well, Tom and I were talking all summer. How are they coming in? With guaranteed contracts, with Saboka and Hunwick and these clowns, you cannot. There's no movement. There's no movement. There's nowhere to go. Okay? You can sit them in the press box, but you can't bring a guy up. There's limits. And then if you want to send a Saboka down and wave him, which, by the way, I would have done a long time ago, you still have to pay him. Okay, the Pagulas have money. But then there's there's a limit in the AHL on roster on age. They, it's a developmental league. And then you're, if, you, if you send a guy like that down, you're someone's got to sit. Yeah. And now you're you're sitting back uh, a, a player that you really need to get some ice time down there. That's right. If the, if there was one thing I could where I blame Terry Pagula, or and, and maybe this has happened, I don't know. Um, I would sit down, shut the door, bring everybody in, players, coaches, managers, scouts, and say, look, I. I I deserve more. The people of Buffalo deserve more. Yeah. Uh, our team is very soft, and I'm not going to take the players off the hook either here. Um, Vegas goes with everybody's cast-offs, goes to the Stanley Cup final. Yeah. And this year they're rolling along. I know they've added a player or two, yeah, but, it's, but effort. And it's there's, there's games where six shots in a period, too. There's a lack of effort. I know the season's winding down, but we have to make it clear that that's unacceptable here. When a star player is being hit right. and people look, yep. I don't like that kind of hockey. And uh, the players, that's on them to, to dig deep. And when you hear the post games, uh, we make the same mistakes. Well, why is that, number one? Is it too complicated? I mean, we've all played hockey, not at a certain high level, but why is it that we're tapping in goals and people aren't... Doc, you go in front of the other team's net and you get beat up and, and our net... It's you could have equipment off and take your helmet off, and no one touches anybody there. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit about that. I know it's recent last night, but it's happened all year. One play last night I watched, there are many, by the way, the defensive lapses. This happened to be on, uh, we were killing a penalty. And my one of my favorites, uh, uh, you know, Scandella, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was a horrible trade, and he is bad. He is just bad. But Scandella's out there with a kid who I kind of like, uh, Nelson. And they are trying to kill a penalty. I'm watching a, 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 an Ottawa Senator camp in front of our goaltender. And these two guys stay between the face-off dots. The puck comes to the guy in front, and he has like seconds to take a backhand and score. Now, I don't know where they learn to play hockey. They are either incredibly dumb, they are either, or they're colorblind because there's a red jersey behind them, okay? Or... They're just ECHL talent, but I, something's wrong, and maybe it's Housley. I don't know what he's teaching them, and I can't believe that a Hall of Famer would teach him that, but this is some bad, well, bad it, hockey. It goes beyond maybe what he's teaching. It's um, they're never set. I mean, Risto, who I like, mm -hmm. is a minus, what, 50? <laughs> is he ever set? I mean, he was sick last night, but that message, when you're winning, it's, hey, we're winning, what are you going to do? But when you matter. start losing, it's, it's a big can't it just grows and grows and grows and I yep. why is he getting nice time and I'm not right and and Risto I think he's a a, a hard playing guy and 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 over aggressive but I don't know if he's got the hockey I between the ears smart yeah and you can live with a guy or two like that but you got Bogo I think is very similar he 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 plays very hard and aggressive but sometimes you gotta wonder like what are you thinking what are you thinking uh, and Scandella go back to Marco Scandella too. Housley wants to play the up-tempo game, and Bogo and Scandella, they don't make that first pass. It's high enough off the glass yeah. all the time where Pilot and this kid they played last night, Borgen, they're really good at the um, the first pass to the forward and let's get going. Let's go. Yeah. And I think growing in Rochester is good. I don't think they need to play as long 
as we're led to believe in Rochester, because really the NHL is a young man's game, mm -hmm. and most of the talent is here. Yep. That's true. And a lot of the AHL is your college free agents getting a little bit out. It's like a that your depth is down there. And until the Sabres um, start making more movement from there, um, there's a log jam. And players old, aren't going to want to sign. Yeah. Well, why would a college free agent come here, Tom? We talked about this. Why would you sign with Buffalo? You know you're going to the AHL, and you know there's a log jam of the uh, Sabokas and the Hunwicks and these clowns. And where are you going? And by the way, I want to get into something in a minute, but the Larson and Gergensen air is over. Um, I, you can find guys down at Holiday Twin Ranks to play that role. I'm sorry. That is just pitiful NHL players that were done. Okay, and we, We're not anything personal on those guys, but no. we've, we've got to move on. When you're playing those guys as many minutes as we do, you got to get 10 goals, right? Right. And our hope now is that someone down in Rochester, a Danny O'Regan, a C.J. Smith, maybe Nylander, can do what those guys do but have some hands. Yeah. And maybe when you give them 13 minutes, they get 12 right. goals a year, not three. But you got to have them going off your butt. A coach and a GM willing to do that. Right. And I don't know. They say they communicate well, but you almost wonder, uh, are they? And um, well, let's talk about communication. If he communi so I heard recently that he, he, from Pagula and others, he communicates so well with his young players. He being Phil Housley. All right, let me let me decipher that. Um, how, how can you possibly say that? When all he does is keep playing these veterans, benching the kids, and then watching what they do in their own zone. I I'm sorry, there's no communication, or it's terrible, or, or they've tuned him out, because I, have n I watch a ton of hockey. I got all the networks, and I will tell you, I don't see things in defensive zones uh, nearly as much on other teams that I see with this team. And I'm sorry, there's some damn talent on that, that back line. You know, it's it's disappointing too because hockey. I've grown up since the '70s with them, and I love the sport. And it's just been so bad. It's it's FC Buffalo. I mean, we just can't score soccer. Soccer. soccer on it's ice. not ice. It's a pitch, and <laughs> it's not even fun to watch anymore. And I want my team back. I want a hard-nosed team that defends one another. I don't know if we'll ever win a cup. Yeah. All right, but uh, the playoffs are a dream. <laughs> but I want my team to play hard and um, like like they're in the streak. And we all knew that that was, you know, a uh, fluff, but it, it happened. But we were playing hard then. Yeah. And we were getting very good goaltending. And let's not take those guys off the hook. That that save percentage has slowly dropped to the uh, the 909 range. And uh, we need better on this team. Yeah. And not I'm, it's not all the problem, but it's part of it. It's part of it. You know, I think you got to weave it all together. I mean, we talked a lot about Len, uh, last year, uh, Lenner, Lenner, excuse me. And Lehner was, um, he, he had problems that, we, that came to, you know, we, we found right. out, came out. And that guy, had, uh, they were nice. He was completely blitzed in the goal crease and, and stopped 9-10. I mean, it, my God. I, I, it's miffing to me, and that's probably bad English, that no one knew <laughs> that this poor guy was going through that much trouble and, by his own admission, drinking. Yeah. And yet the guy had a 909 save percentage. And these two guys this year, they're, they're hovering about that now. And and go to last year, too, with Ryan O'Reilly. I was disappointed with him, too, but wouldn't he look good down the middle? And I'm not saying hindsight's 2020. I'm saying we said that back then. Couldn't we have sat Ryan O'Reilly down and said, what's up? What's mm -hmm. going on? I mean, um, he would look down the middle real strong right now with yeah. middle stat playing out of the third hole there and Jack on the top and got nothing for that deal. No, no, that, that was really bad. I want to talk a little bit, too, about uh, we got this kid, UPL, and uh, playing some goal in, in the OHA. And and uh, I've heard recently, you know, you got uh, the old-timers, you know, Reve, you know, in the National Hockey League, you know, he's going to play at 25, eh? No, 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 no. This kid... What do we see this year? Philadelphia brought hard up. The kid won nine straight. Okay, he's 20 years old. Uh, St. Louis season was going down the tubes. They brought in a kid named, I think it's Billington or Bennington. That guy has gone crazy and turned that team around to where they're, they're almost winning their division. Okay, This UPL goes to the AHL next year. And if this guy's a star early on, halfway through the year, he's got to play in Buffalo, New York. End of story. Okay, I don't care about the Calder Cup. I don't care about cooking them or baking them or, or putting sprinkles on them in the freaking city of Rochester, which, by the way, it's about three fans at every game. Darcy Regeer used to say he had a game, a amount of games. I want to say 200 games he'd like his young players to play in the AHL. Um, I think it's 
shorter than that now. I, I don't agree with him with a lot of things. I do with that. Uh, UPL, because it's a lot easier to say than the name, <laughs> um, to go down to the AHL next year and see how he adjusts to the shots, the travel, um, all of that kind of stuff. And I, 